In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural icy snow material. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group. So we first have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. Then we also have this ice and snow factor. So if I want more snow, I can turn this up, or if I want more ice, I can turn that down. Or I can just kind of leave it in the middle, and you can see there are some little patchy areas where there's ice and then other parts where there's snow. Then we have the different colors here. So we have color one, which can kind of be like a blue color to make it look more icy and make it look more like frozen water. And then we also have color two, which is just gonna be kind of a light color, and I made it slightly blue. Then we also have just the ice scale, so I can change just that icy texture. Then we have the ice detail value, and then we have some noise settings like the noise scale, and then we also have this noise detail. Then we have the subsurface scattering, so this allows just a little bit of light to go through the ice, so I just turn this up to a 0.3 to make it look a bit more like ice. And then we have the roughness of the material, so it's very shiny right now, but you could make it more rough if you wanted to. And then we have the bump strength just to change that surface bump, and then we also have have the displacement strength to change the size of the displacement. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page with the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, you can check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. You can also purchase all of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial Playlist. All the links are in the description. Alright, so real quick I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the Add menu, I went here to Mesh, and I just added an Icosphere, and then right behind me, if you click on the Add Icosphere settings right after you add the Icosphere, I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to like a 6, so it is nice and smooth and round, and it has lots of detail. And then I'll close the Add Icosphere settings. And I want lots of geometry because I'm going to be using the displacements to actually pop out the mesh. And then I want to scale this down so it's better size for modeling to the real life scale in Blender because the default objects are quite large. So I will scale this object down, so hit S to scale, I'll type in like 0.2 and then enter. And then I'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. And then I'm also going to press Control A and I'm just going to apply the scale so this is the object's new default size. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the object. And if you select the camera, and then if you go right over here to the side panel and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turn the focal length to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. And then also here on the output properties, I set the X and Y resolution the same, so it is a square image. Now I also added a few different area lights right here, so I added one big area light right up here, and then another smaller area light right over here. And with both of these area lights, if you select the area light and go over here to the object data properties, I turn the power up to 60 and just left them add a white color. Now also to get some more nice lighting and reflections, over here on the world properties, I added in this HDRI. This is from polyhaven.com. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to download it. And on polyhaven.com, I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version. So then once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot next to color, and you can choose the environment texture, and then click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then I turned the strength of the HDRI to 0.5, so it's just half as strong. So this is going to give some nice lighting and reflections in the 3D scene. And then if you want to make the world background transparent just so that you can't see it in the background, then you can go right up here to the render properties, you can open up the film tab, and you can check mark the transparent button so it'll still light the scene but you won't be able to see it in the background. You can also go down here to the color management, and I'm going to use the view transform of filmic and the look to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make things more saturated and contrasty. And then I'm also going to be using the cycles rendering engine because I am going to be using the material displacements. If you want to use Eevee, you can, but the material displacements will not work in Blender Eevee. So let's just select the object here, and then I went over here to the shading workspace. So in the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here, and I'm in the rendered mode, and then I have the shader editor right over here. So let's click on new here to add a new material and I can just rename the material to icy snow. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences, and then you can go right over here to the add-ons and here on the search you can type in node and you can just check mark the node wrangler add-on so it's built in a blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. We can close blender's user preferences. So to create the icy texture I'm going to 
to start by going to the add menu and I'm going to search for a Vorno texture. Let's drop the Vorno here. And then to use the node wrangler, you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes. And that is going to preview the node on the object. Also with the Voronoi texture selected, I'm going to press Control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the objects more evenly. So we'll put the object into the vector. And then we can change some of the Voronoi texture settings. So this F1 here, I'm going to change to smooth F1, and that's going to smooth out those edges. You can see, whereas before with F1, there's kind of those sharp edges there, but changing it to smooth F1 will smooth it out, and there is a smoothness here, but I'm going to leave the smoothness value at 1. And then let's also change some of the more of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 16, so you can see more of them. And then I'll turn the detail up to the max 15, so that it's quite detailed. And then this lack and arity value, I'm going to turn this up to 50, and by turning it up, if you zoom in here, you can see See there's a bunch of little dots on the texture and that'll help to give it kind of that icy snowy look. Now I want to put a texture into the roughness to tell it what parts are going to be more rough and what parts are going to be less rough to kind of add some variation. So I'm going to click and drag the box, select these nodes and drag them back. I can now go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's put it here. And then again, I want to use the object coordinates. So let's put the vector into the vector of the noise texture and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And let's change some of the settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 40 and then I'll turn the detail level to the max of 15 and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So I'm going to use this noise texture and I'm going to put it into the roughness to tell some parts to be more rough and other parts to be less rough. So the factor can go into the roughness and I can control shift and select the Voronoi and now you can see that texture is much more interesting. However, I do want to control those values a little bit better. So I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a color ramp and we're going to put the color ramp in between both of these textures here. So if I drag the black tab over here, you can see that less of these areas are going to be detailed or less of the areas are going to be rough. And then if I drag drag this back and drag the white tab over, you can see it's going to be very detailed. So what I'm going to do is just drag this black tab over just a little bit, kind of to about here, and then leave this where it is. So this way there's even more variation because some parts are more detailed and other parts are less detailed. All right, so we can now plug this Voronoi texture into the principled shader. So first let's take the distance and I'm going to plug that into the normal. And then to convert this to proper normal data, I need to go to the add menu and we'll search for a bump node and we'll stick this in between the Voronoi and the principled shader. And I and control shift and select the principal shader and the distance needs to be going into the height value and that way the bump node will convert it to bump data and then it is too strong and I want it to be much less strong so I'll turn the strength just down to like a 0.2 so there's just a little bit of bump over the entire material and then also this roughness here because this is icy snow I want it to be very shiny so I'll turn the roughness to zero then this distance we can also plug this into the base color to give it a little bit of variation in the colors but I want to change the colors I want it to be kind of like a white and blue color not white and black so I'll go to the admin menu and I'm going to search for the mix color and let's drop the mix color after the Voronoi but before the principled shader and the distance value can go into the factor. So now this Voronoi texture is going into the factor so it's determining what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So for color A here I'm going to make this fully white and then I'll just make it a little bit blue and then color B I'll also make this fully white but I'll just make it a tiny bit blue. And if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using you can use the hex values. So for for color A, if I go here to the hex value, color A is going to be a hex value of BF, E4, FF, and then color B here, this is going to be a hex value of E5, F7, FF. Now right now the whole thing kind of looks like snow, but I want to make some parts look like ice, and icy is a bit transparent, you can see through it, it kind of acts like glass. So I'm going to open up this transmission here, we can turn up this transmission to make it look more like glass or ice. Now I don't want the entire thing to look like ice, I just want some parts here and there to look like the ice. So we're going to take the Voronoi distance and we're going to put that into the transmission weight. But then I want to control that better, so I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp so we can control the colors. And let's put the color ramp here after the Voronoi, but before that, that transmission weight, and just drag it down here. So you can see right now this part looks more like snow, but then there are some areas where it looks more like ice. But we can now change the colors to control that a bit better. So I'm going to drag the black tab over here and the white tab over here. So I'm basically going to flip both of the values. So the white tab is now over here. And I'm going to drag the white tab over here. You can see if I drag it over more, more of it is going to look like ice. But if I drag the black tab over, more of it is going to look like snow. 
So I'll drag the white tab over here and then leave the black tab there. And then also on this white tab, instead of it being fully white, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And if you wanna use the same hex value, you can punch in D7, D7, D7. So it's basically gonna be a very, very light gray. And later on in the custom node group, I wanna be able to control how much is ice and how much is snow. So we can just control the light and dark values of this weight, of this color ramp. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the hue saturation value. And we'll put this here before the color ramp. So this hue saturation value has a value and this is going to make it lighter or darker. So I can just drag these values and you can see it'll be more like snow if I turn it up or more ice if I turn it down. So we'll be using that later in the custom nude group. And then also I want to add some subsurface scattering just to make it look a bit more like soft snow. So let's go here to the subsurface and I'm going to turn the weight to just like a 0.3. I think that is good for what I'm doing. So now I want to add some values into the displacement to actually make the material bumpy. But I don't want to add this Vorno texture into the displacement because this Vorno texture is way too detailed and it has all those little dots there with the lack of arity. So I'm going to select the Voronoi and I'm going to press Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the node, but it'll keep the wires plugged up. And I'll just drop it down here, and then I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. We can change some of the settings. So this scale here, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 20. And then also the detail, I'm gonna turn this down because I don't want the displacement to be super detailed. I want it to be a bit more lumpy. So I'll turn the detail to just like a two. And this lacunarity, I'll turn that to zero because I don't want any lacunarity. So now this Voronoi texture distance, we can plug this all the way over here to the displacement, and I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now you can see it's not actually popping out the mesh that's because we need to go here to the side panel so I'll open up the side panel and I'm gonna go here to the material and we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna go to the setting tab so open up the setting and then here under surface we want to change the displacement type to displacement and bump and this is telling the material that it can use the displacements and also if you're using the EV rendering engine the material displacements won't work so if you want to use the material displacements make sure you're using cycles now you can see the materials jutting off to the side and that's because we need to convert the black and white data of the Voronoi texture into displacement data so I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for the displacement node and we'll drop this here in the wire and then I can just drag this down here now this distance value from the Voronoi this needs to be going into the height value of the displacement and that'll actually convert it to proper displacement data now you can see it's still way too strong so if I just turn this strength value way down now it's much less strong and specifically I'm going to use a displacement value of 0 0.01. So now it's just a little bit bumpy there on the edges. All right, and that is it for the procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group. So I can click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output, and then I can press Control G. Control G will join it together into a node group. And with the node group selected, you can hit the tab key to go in and out of the node group. So let's go out of the node group and I can drag this over here. Let's also drag it out to make it a bit bigger. And then here I want to make it the same name as the material. So I'll just add the name there, Icy Snow. And then I will go back into the node group. Now if I press the N key to open up the side panel here, you can see there's the interface and there's the displacement and then there's also the BSDF. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to rename it to shader because I like that better. So if you hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, you can see it just says shader. Let's hit tab to go back into the node group. Now if we go over here to this group input, we can plug values up to the group input, and then we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group. So I first want to be able to control the overall size of the entire material. So we can take this scale value here from the mapping, and this scale value is plugged up to all the textures. So this will change all of the textures at once, so it'll change the entire size of the material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket there. And then if you click here on scale, right now it's going to be three values, but I just want it to be one value. So let's click on the type here, and I can change it to float instead. And that way it'll just be one value. And then here on the default value, I need to turn this to 1. I also need to hit the tab key to go out of the node group. And then this scale here, I need to turn that to 1. All right, let's go back into the node group. Now I also want to be able to control the ice and snow factor, so let's drag the group input over here, and this hue saturation value, this value here, is going to make it more icy or more snowy. So we'll put the value into the extra socket here, and I can double click on this on the side panel to rename it, and I'm going to rename it to ice and snow factor, just to control that. 
And then I want to be able to control the colors. So let's take the group input and we can drag it up here. And then on this mix here, we have the two different colors. So we'll put A into the extra socket there. And then B, we'll put that into the extra socket here. And I can double click on these to rename them. And I'll rename this one to color one. And then this one here, I'll just rename that to color two. Or you could rename it like ice color and snow color if you wanted to. So now I want to control the ice scale and the ice detail. So that's going to be these values here on this base Voronoi texture. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket here and the detail also put that into the extra socket. And I can double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to ice scale. And then this one here, I'll rename that to ice detail. And then I also want to control these noise texture settings. So let's drag the group input right down here. And I want to put the scale into the extra socket and the same thing, so the detail into the extra socket there. And then I can just double click on these and I'll just add the word noise to the starting so you know what they are. So noise scale, and we'll call this one noise detail. And then I want to control the subsurface scattering. So we can go here to the subsurface and we can take this weight and we can drag this all the way over here and we can stick it right here into the extra socket and then you can see right now it says subsurface weight I'm gonna double click on this and rename it to subsurface scattering instead so there we go subsurface scattering then I want to control the roughness of the material so let's just drag this over here next to the principal shader and this roughness we can put that into the extra socket there to control the roughness and then I also want to control the bump strength so let's drag this back here behind the bump and we can take this strength value from the bump and we can put that into the extra socket here. I can double click on this and rename it to bump strength. And then I also want to control the displacement strength. So let's drag the group input down here. And we have this displacement scale value. So we'll put that into the extra socket. And I can double click on this and I can rename it to displacement strength. All right, so I'll drag the group input right back over here. I can hit the tab key to go out of the node group and I'll hit the N key to close the side panel. We can now just review the final material. So we have the overall scale. Then we have this really cool ice and snow factor. So if I want very snowy or very icy, I can just control that very easily with that value. Then I have the different colors. So one color is more blue and then another color is a bit more white, but you could make it more blue if you want to. And then we also have the ice scale and we also have the ice detail. Then we also have some noise settings, so we have the noise scale, and then we also have the noise detail. Then we have the subsurface scattering if you want to add more of that. Then we have the roughness of the material if you want it to be really shiny or more rough. Then we also have the surface bump strength. And then finally we have the displacement strength to actually pop out the mesh. So that'll be it for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this finished procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and also my Patreon page. And to purchase all of my materials, you can check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials, pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And you can also purchase all of my materials individually individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All the links are in the description. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.